is Rick, and you're seated at the play table, and we are continuing our revisitation of Iron Crown Enterprises' Merp Middle Earth role playing game. And this is Hazards of the Herod Wood, a ready to run fantasy role playing adventure module from J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth. Right? It says four low to mid level adventures based on Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Each stands alone, blah, blah, blah. Or can be ran together. Uh, this is one that I don't think I've ever used. I don't remember ever running it as in a campaign in the game. Uh, in fact, it, it looks almost new. <laughs> and I guess not. It does a little water damage from when I was staying in my folks' basement. And this was produced in 1990. And it's a section of an area of Far Herod. So, Secrets Lurk Within Far Herod's Vale of Tears. And of course, that'll be the intro lingo, so I'm not going to read through all of it. Uh, I read through this here last week. I kind of did a glaze over it to remind myself. Of course, our conversion charts, all the stuff you need to make it functional in any, pretty much any game system you can imagine. A uh, little map of the area. This is out of summer. Is an anomaly, a lush green rainforest amidst the scorching lands of Far Herod. Here, particular winds from the fertile hills, cool uh, bay, sweep to the Vale of Tears, depositing frequent showers in the fertile hills, cool streams, and brooks bubble happily down the valley, steaming with life. Cloistered in this island environment are the Calvar, the animals, and the Ovar, or the plants, which form an astonishing lich ecosystem noted for its startling colors and, and countless species. Despite its feastful and plentiful appearance, life for the bizarre and odd within the, the zoo, summer is a difficult one. Coupled with stifling humidity, unbearable heat makes it difficult for most even the hardy hardim to dwell within the borders of the forest. The salhrons dwell on the edges of the forest, taking advantage of the moist rains while avoiding the jungle's unpleasant trees. They leave the sweltering wood to their neighbors, the wild and reclusive hunan, who are which are related to the woes, and who are immune to the deep jungle diseases. So we got to talk about. Or flora and fauna, particular nasty uh, illness called the weeping fever, biting and stinging insects, think of malaria, something like malaria, hazards. Then we get to the first adventure, the disappearing flock. It says, Brett Town, as a local shepherd, innkeeper, has recently been victimized by a series of mysterious losses. Uh, one week ago, a young lamb disappeared from a flock sheep tended by a son. Manchin convinced that the lamb would wander off. Both Bertman and Manchin uh, conducted a search, but their hunt proved fruitless. Night fell, and the end of their investigation. Neither father nor son dared go any further into the jungle, at least to get hopelessly lost in the darkness. Over the next five nights, two or more sheep disappeared from the grazing fields west of the inn, both full-grown ewes. Barthen is now deeply concerned about the loss. His flock is his livelihood, his source of income, and substance. Desperate, the shepherd now seeks help from anyone willing to look for missing livestock, hence to where the NPCs come in. So you get the key NPCs, his, uh, the shepherd, his wife, his kid, the wife of his kid, his kid's son, his kid's daughter. There again, the wild man. Surrounding area, maps of surrounding area, the homestead. Hunting traps. So at the end of the day, basically what the, con uh, the, the, the deal here is, is that a, uh, a small tribe of uh, Hanan, which is uh, wild men or wolves who live, usually live far deeper in the jungle, have suffered their own loss of their particular flock of sheep. And so come to the edge of the woods looking to replace, find replacements, and they're not 100%. They're not really aware that they're stealing somebody else's sheep. And if you can make contact with them in a peaceful means without getting killed or falling into a trap or having to wipe out their little village, you can come to an understanding with them and they and they will make some kind of restitution and stuff. Uh, so the fairly so the overall task for is simple, find the reason for the chief's disappearance, help recover the beast or some proper compensation. PCs can solve the problem by either negotiating with or eliminating the thieves. The obstacles are the six 
hunting or child, they may often since they are sheep, sheep thieves. Their skills are especially their poison can be a potent force against the adventurers, skilled talkers, or stalkers. They regularly hunt down the mightiest of forest predators. It's possible to negotiate with the, the, the Suzamtu warriors, although there's a language barrier. In addition, they are desperately hope to start a new flocks into, for their tribe, so they will fight hard for their new livestock. They believe that the sheep they found is a gift from the moon god Suzash, and they are not easily swayed from their beliefs. Very straightforward. The next adventure is the Suzanne summer is a hazard itself, but the flora and fauna of the rainforest increase this hazard. Low undergrowth may cover deep holes, make cliffs appear like a gentle slope. Mischievous sitan and fierce uncomposed animals. I'm, I'm guessing uh, something like uh, monkeys and things like that. So. Adventure. This is the Lights of Abasher. South of Berthen's homestead in the grasslands directly east of Sizun, summer lies the small town of Abasher. Although a quiet community is very different from the other towns within the, the region because the jungle is such an impact upon its residents. Residents staying on the backs of the spring of uh, the Lazurhar or spring, a river northwest of uh, Bazar. Abasher enjoys a constant supply of cool fresh water originally from the forest. Small town is the center of a medium sized agricultural community that is currently in, enjoying a period of prosperity. Farmers grow virtually every kind of fruit and vegetable native to the region, while herders raise goats and sheep. Tell now that life has been normal and, and quiet. However, recent weeks sees a dis series of disturbances that frighten the local folk, and the mood of town has changed. The lights, the tail of the lights in the sky. Ooh, no, it's not UFOs. Uh, let's see, now here's experiment. A hare, an old amnest, is dwelling on the edge of the jungle, designs two miles from Abishar, who is a botanist, and spent all his life caring for and learning about plants and animals of rainforest. He has a small botanical garden next to his home, growing a wide assortment of rare flowers and plants. Several weeks ago, an aging hermit came to the realization that he could no longer maintain the entire garden himself, especially after expanding, uh, expanding its size last year. Due to his preference for solitude, he desired not to hire any laborers to help him. Uh, rather, he hopes to summon a creature that acts as a servant while lighting the garden, garden even through the darkest of nights. So, in his years of study of the magical arts, he's learned of the creature that might help him with his agricultural chores. Decided to summon them to his bidding and tend his garden. And calling the Barcherius, he's named him. The Hermes overlooked the possibility the creatures might be unwilling to aid him and did not take the necessary precautions. Upon only upon summoning six of these creatures, he realized his folly. The birch immediately disobeyed his request and set out to explore the land about his homestead. The hair was shattered, and the mischievous birch were loosed upon the land. And this is where the NPCs come in, and the young fellow run a friend, and other NPCs, the layouts of the town, Abasher, a little bit of a map going on there. Uh, the hire's uh, cottage and, and garden and surrounding area is an arboretum the hires home more detailed interior so the task initially the task with the characters find the origin of the darting lights and the reason for they are terrorizing a basher true nature of the barsha can be deceptive since their antics and appearance make them resemble undead therefore the first part of the adventure will, will include trying to understand the creatures and the attempt to discover from where they arrived since these creatures were summoned by Nahar, he wishes to retain control of the Barsha and send them back to their mysterious place of origin. He hopes to do so secretly. One problem remains, the Barsha is still at large and must be captured in order for the Amnesty to return them to their own world. The starting players, the aids, opticals. There's a lot of options and opportunities in there to catch these these otherworldly fae-like things and then return them to, and find out that the Animus, the Nasher is involved and then make the connections and somehow aid him in sending these things back to where they came from. So we got Terror in the Jungle. Adventure number three. The Stirrings of the Lost Ruins. Jeremiah has been a professional hunter for nearly 15 years, making his living hunting and trapping food or animals for food in their pelts. He's dwelt in the shadow of the rainforest all of his life, regularly venturing into the veil. However, it is important it is possible for even a veteran woodsman to become lost among the great green ma uh, masses of uh, Samar. Such as Jannar's uh, case two weeks ago, he strayed too far from the known pass and the jungle lost his way. As a skilled tracker, he was able to regain his bearings and make his way towards the edge of the jungle. He stumbled across a startling sight, the ruins of an ancient keep covered in thousands of years of growth. 
Overcome with curiosity, he decided to explore the ruins, hoping to discover more information regarding his past. Once among the eroded stones, the hunter began to feel a cold sensation on the back of his neck, as if he were being observed. Believing this to be an ill omen, he left the ancient keep and headed home. By his presence in the long banded keep, Jamara unwittingly awakened Yashar, the fallen Tarbar spirit. Terra Azusa summer has returned. Only foolish free of sleep, once fully free of sleep, the demon will unleash an awful reign of terror upon nearby Abashar, bidding his citizens dreams while they sleep and filling their waking hours with horrific hallucinations. So we got a bunch of NPCs, the hunter in question, the the runs of the keep. The demon itself. As a spirit of dreams, Yashar has the ability to invade the soul while it sleeps peacefully at night or to create hallucinations by day. He bestows upon his victims a world of nightmarish creatures and feeds upon their resultant fear. He has been plaguing Jarner for six nights and extends his reach to Jarner's wife on the last one. His attacks are, rare, are rarely overt harmful since he prefers torture his victims while they sleep or daydream. The demon usually appears in the visions he sends. So your task. Adventure among the most dangerous challenging PCs they ever faced. They must first discover the reason and source of hunters' nightmares and prevent their occurrence. The destruction of the dream spirit is the only possible solution, since Yashar will continue to evade the dreams of uh, Jarnir and his family all, until all life, will, and energy of each individual has been drained away. Yashar's appetite is insatiable, and his influence will not remain limited to Jarnir's household. If the fallen Tavar continues his rampage, the citizens of Abashar will be soon experiencing the nightmares and hallucinations, i.e. walking dreams, until everyone is dead or has left the area. Outcome may become very grim for the adventurers to able to defeat Yashar. The Savar prison within the Keepa is seeking a way to escape, etc., etc. So I keep in mind that the, the player characters wants to get involved are likely also to encounter the sleep demon and suffer horrible, terrible nightmares. Good luck on that one. And the last one here is Eyes of the Dragon. Jeez. During the years before the downfall of Numer and the Second Age, Numerians suffered considerable resentment toward the Eldar. Much of this came from the form of opposition to the band in Amun of the Valar, since men desired immortality of those dwelling in Amun. To wish to avoid death, the gift of Eru, the first stirred in the court of Tar and Terran. Uh, while he ruled many, ruled many Numerians strove to revive the Eldar through excellence in forging magical artifacts. One such alchemist. Tamarcher Eknatar created two lesser seeing stones at the, the king's, king's orders. The orders were modeled after the mighty Palatari, forged by Fina of the First Age, although not nearly as powerful. The stones enabled their wielders to see great distances. They were Tamarcher's crowning achievement, but the effort to, of their creation left him drained. He retired from the royal court seven years after their completion, shortly before his death in the early days of Second Age 1911. The alchemist delivered his stones to his son, uh, Carethor. He hoped to keep the greatest creation in the hands of his descendants. Fearing uh, that the king, would, the king would, uh, might exact vengeance against his family, they fled to the Far East. So, what we got here? The task. Initially, the task is simply to accompany a young man and his companion to, the, to help forced to help find a shrine and a boy's heritage. Later, the PCs may have to fight or flee for their lives as the desert screamers seek possession of two seeing stones of anarchy. The second part of the task will be to prevent the stones from falling into the hands of the southern dragon. If the stones are lost to Jeru, the future effects could be very harsh in the land of Far Herod. The stones will give the shadow the ability to predict the moves of his opponents and make it far easier for his armies to pounce when the time is right. The stones will become the eyes of the dragon. So you got Jeru here, who is a, one of your chief foes. Where are you at, Jeru? Truly ruthless man, uh, Juru the Desert Screamer, has been a member of the Garks, an, or an order of rugged outdoorsmen who served the interests of the Val Gark for nearly 40 years. He's a dangerous assassin and was dispatched with a storm cream himself to follow Minari, find the seeing stones. He's also a half elf. 
is a half elf with avar blood mingling in his veins, though he takes great pains to conceal it. His elven heritage is apparent in his almond shaped gray eyes. Otherwise, his darkly tanned skin, thick desert garb make him indis you know, pretty much the same as anybody else you're standing next to. So, there's your four adventures. It's not a bad module. It, there, there's some interesting stuff in here. It's, pl it's playable. Like I said, it doesn't really add. Other than the forest, it adds a little bit. I mean, we're, we're talking a bit more information about this particular location in Farhaird. But other than that, I mean, it's not. Yeah. It's a good one. Sure. Till next time.